My name is Dr. Andre Fredoux. I am the medical director of the Oklahoma Stroke and Neurological Institute here at Hillcrest Medical Center. Today's topic is a topic that's near and dear to all of us. Those of us that have young children, those of us that have been in motor vehicle accidents, that have fallen off of horses. Uh, we're gonna talk about concussions today. And my hope is that the goal will be that you will take away from this some very simple information that you can uh, put in your back pocket for those of you that have young children as well as those of us that change light bulbs for our loved ones and those that drive kids to different events and may be rear-ended. Uh, uh, the goal is for you to have something that you can hold on to so that you don't feel completely inept in the medical establishment. So what is a concussion? Okay, uh, And concussions are not as prevalent as I think everybody thinks. Uh, you know, we always see the stories on uh, television uh, or on the news of somebody who has a massive con concussion and we hear about uh, the, the terrible things that can happen with that. But uh, a concussion essentially is a disruption in normal brain function and it's usually due to some form of trauma. Um, whether that is a uh, fall from a ladder or whether that may be uh, being hit uh, during a football game or in a soccer uh, game, heading the ball. Uh, the prevalence of it is, for at least for young kids that are playing football, uh, the prevalence is, is less than 1%, really. It's uh, about 0.6 uh, in 1,000 individuals playing. So, you know, we're not talking about a concussion every single week, but when it deals with you and deals with your child and deals with your loved one, you know what, there, it is uh, an important topic for us to be well informed about. Girls tend to be more affected by soccer. So, and with some of the new guidelines with minimizing head, uh, heading balls uh, until the age of 14, that helps and that will help to minimize that. But, you know, uh, kids can be aggressive, whether they get an elbow or whether, you know, you get caught in a scrum. So concussions do happen. Uh, I think an important thing to keep in mind is that what do you do when you have a concussion? And uh, as a parent, I have uh, three uh, beautiful children. I'm very fortunate and blessed to have that. Um, and my daughter's turned 17 today, so I, don't, I know she's not watching this, but uh, happy birthday, sweetheart. Uh, but having young kids, uh, you have young, kind of malleable brains. And so uh, how a child responds to a head trauma concussion is going to be different than how an adult responds and so it's important for us to be as protective of, as we can of, of our kids uh, uh, in, in regards to this so the things that we need to be aware of is that when someone does have a concussion what are you looking for okay you know me being in the stands and I'm watching my 11 year old playing football and uh, I'm, I'm watching him make a tackle I'm thinking okay how quickly is he getting up Okay, what things are going on with him on the football field. So some things to keep in mind are is, you know, how is your child responding? So, you know, if a kid is uh, essentially down for a prolonged period of time not moving, that's, that's a warning sign, okay? Loss of consciousness usually is a sign of a uh, more significant concussion. Uh, if, you're, if your son or daughter, they get up and they're a little bit woozy, you see them kind of staggering around a little bit, okay, well your balance is affected whenever someone has a concussion. Uh, your vision is affected, so uh, the ability for uh, an individual to kind of track an object becomes compromised. Um, uh, sometimes kids will get, and adults will sometimes get nauseated, so they may be nausea, they may be vomiting, those are usually signs of a more significant uh, concussion. So when you see these types of things, okay, then what do we do? Well, uh, if you have a child that is on the field and you're not on the field, you, know, you need to uh, you know, keep an eye on them. Coaches now are getting great training when it comes to how to manage children that may be injured. Uh, and uh, the, the first rule now is to take a kid off the field. Uh, and, and remove their helmet from them or just remove them from competition and, and that's great that's very different than uh, when I played when I essentially had you know, coaches that were kind of you know when you came off the field they're ask, asking you well, well, why aren't you back on the field uh, now we are much more in tune with trying to make sure that we're protecting our kids and protecting ourselves in these environments um, 
a lot of times you will have schools that will do pre uh, uh, concussion training and uh, as well as doing different testing so kids will be tested before they get out on the field uh, and start practice which I think is a great idea because you have a good baseline to know hey uh, what is the uh, my, my kids uh, eye tracking movements or their memory movements or their balance uh, balancing abilities like before they get involved in competition and then you have that as a barometer to check in case heaven forbid your, your son or daughter is possibly injured uh, if your school does not do that I think it's important for your uh, their pediatrician to be looking at doing that. So we don't always have to rely on the school per se to be the ones to advocate for our children. We can advocate for our children. So if before physical competition starts, I think it's good to have a baseline test. And you can use that test. Doctors can, trainers can, and parents can to kind of see where your child is. Um, in regards to what do we do if our son or daughter has a concussion. Well, the signs and symptoms are important, and those signs are headaches, dizziness, sensitivity to light, uh, sometimes sensitivity to sound, uh, uh, nausea and vomiting, um, uh, difficulty with concentration, uh, and, and mood changes. And so if you have a child who is experiencing those, uh, any of those types of symptoms, then that is a warning sign. Okay. And with that warning sign, there needs to be uh, an action that, that follows that. Uh, and whether that is the action of removing them from competition, or whether that is um, minimizing some of their activities, it's important to at least have those symptomatology. As a dad and as a physician, uh, more importantly as a dad, uh, my, my thought is, is to remove uh, my, my son, my daughter, from competition until all of those symptoms are gone. And that's essentially what the American Academy of Neurology also says. That it's important for children to, to give their brain a chance to reset. Because unfortunately, if a child does have a concussion, they are more prone to having a second concussion compared to an individual who's never had a concussion. So let me say that again, it's a very important point. If your son or daughter has a concussion, they're more susceptible to a second concussion than an individual, same age, same demographic, who has never had a concussion. So with that, again, that it falls on us to be as protective as we possibly can, uh, to try to get them out of that environment, to give their brain a chance to heal and a chance to kind of reset itself. Dr. Perdue, we have a question coming in. I just wanted to Great. ask, um, what are the long-term damaging effects from a concussion? And I know there could be more than one, but... Yeah. Well, that's a great question. And with a, a lot of the information that we're getting uh, now with CTE, which is chronic traumatic encephalopathy, there's a lot of individuals that are thinking, well, if I had a concussion when I played football back you know, 20 years ago, am I going to get something as uh, 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 challenging as CTE? Um, concussions in, uh, in and of themselves, if somebody has a mild concussion, there, there's very little long-term effect from that. The challenge comes in if you have multiple concussions. And it kind of goes back to the timing that we spoke of before, where if you have a concussion and an individual is not removed from competition, they're more prone to having a second concussion. And so that makes them more prone to having a third concussion. And now we're talking about having repetitive injury as we are seeing and hearing more and more about uh, some of these professional football players that have donated their brain uh, to, uh, for, for study. And now we're seeing these, uh, these uh, traumatic effects of chronic repetitive activity. The key for us as parents, the key for us as individuals now that we have this information is to remove our child or our, our, our loved one from competition so that their, their brain can one heal and, and hopefully gives us some tools to minimize the risk of a second, third, or fourth concussion. Uh, we also got a question from Olivia. It looks similar Great. to what you just asked. She said, will a concussion negatively affect my child's brain development? Well, uh, again, one concussion, two concussions, likely not. 
but again, it also depends upon the degree of injury. If someone has a, a mild concussion, there's no loss of consciousness, uh, they essentially uh, uh, they come off the field, they, they may be a little bit woozy, they may have a mild headache or may have some dizziness. Uh, removing them from competition, usually and within about seven to ten days, that individual is probably uh, going to be able to get, get back into competition or get back at least into uh, the process of being evaluated for that. A more severe uh, concussion where, say, there's a loss of consciousness, that individual needs a longer period of time. And so with that longer period, there is still a very good chance that the, uh, the brain of a healthy young individual has a great deal of plasticity to it, which means it recovers very well from uh, any types of, of injury. Uh, but the more concussions that can occur, you can then start to develop a greater likelihood of having a longer term effect from any type of concussion that you might have. So, so a couple of other things uh, to keep in mind is that there's always this thought of, okay, well, is there a special helmet or a special mouth guard or what can I do to remove my child from having a concussion? Now, the, the challenge that we run into is that there are no specific helmets uh, to date or mouthpieces that are, uh, are, are concussion proof. Uh, you, there are a lot of companies that are out there that are advertising that they're doing certain testing and my hope and prayer is that within the next three to five years that maybe we do have a special con uh, concussion proof helmet or mouth guard but we don't have those things now. I think the most important thing to do with, uh, with our children and with our coaches particularly is, is, is the type of techniques that are being taught. Uh, you know, you shouldn't be lowering your head where you cannot see the individual that you're trying to tackle. You know, if we removed heading uh, from soccer, that goes a long way. I think kids wearing a mouthpiece, is, it is protective in, in, uh, in, in some form from like basketball, if you catch an elbow or if you catch a knee. But because of the way that the young brain develops, it's going to be more prone to concussion than as we get older, because one, a, a younger brain, a lot of times the skull is, uh, is, is not completely calcified and you don't have quite the protective armor of the skull like we have when uh, we're older. So uh, the important thing is technique and you want to be involved, you want to know about technique and there's a lot of websites that are on uh, that, that are available that can look at proper technique for tackling and proper technique for heading if, you're, uh, if your child is 15, 16, uh, or, or beyond that 14 age barrier of, of, uh, uh, of heading. So be, just be involved, be engaged. Uh, the, I, the, the notion of just letting someone train uh, your son or daughter in activity and you not knowing kind of what they're doing, uh, I think we all need to be more engaged at this particular point. So. Um, I always get the question of, hey, is there a special medication if I have a concussion? Well, there are no medications at this particular point that are FDA approved for concussion. Uh, but for headaches, you know, a lot of it's symptomatic management. So, you know, the Advil, the Tylenol, the Aleves, uh, those are, are beneficial. Uh, if, if you have a child that is nauseated, there are over-the-counter medications that can help with that. Those are usually just the signs and symptoms of the concussion. And the more significant the symptoms, usually that means the more significant the trauma. So uh, if you have a child that uh, you, know, you believe that, that has had a concussion, I am a huge advocate of bringing them to the emergency room. Let's get the best testing we possibly can as quickly as we possibly can so we can then put a plan in place of getting our son or daughter back into uh, back into schoolwork, most importantly, but also to get them back into their activities. Uh, there's always the issue, and I've even had to talk to some physicians about the fact that you come to the emergency room, you have a head trauma, and you get an imaging study. And so what imaging study is the best imaging study? Well, a head CT uh, is very simple. Uh, it's a, a very, uh, what we call a rudimentary test, but it gives you a good idea if there has been a significant injury to the brain. But the idea that you have a normal head CT means that you do not have a concussion is not true. You can have a concussion 
and have a normal head CT. And if you're gonna have a concussion, I would much rather have a normal head CT than to see trauma to the brain where there may be bleeding over the surface of the brain or in within the, the core of the brain. A concussion is more of a injury where the different cells in the brain are having a hard time communicating with each other. While a CT scan is gonna be much more amped to show if you've had a much larger injury such as such a head uh, trauma where you actually have bleeding in the brain. And, and, and that is uh, far, far more severe, and that is absolutely an individual that needs to be admitted to the hospital and needs to be very closely monitored, likely in an ICU setting. Uh, an MRI scan is a good study if someone has a more severe headache or a more severe concussion. If someone loses consciousness on the field, they're down for a long period of time, if they have prolonged symptoms of headache and nausea and vomiting and other things that just looks much more severe or significant compared to a mild injury, then an MRI scan is a very good test to kind of look to make sure that all the structures of the brain are where they're supposed to be. Dr. Purdue, we have another question from Hillary. Yes. She's asking on average, how long does it take for a child to recover from a concussion? And um, I would also ask if you uh, jump the gun and get out there too soon, um, it, does that increase the damage or increase the length of recovery? Hillary, that's a great question. And, uh, and I can tell you, you probably have some children that are playing competitive sports. So we break concussions down into two types. And depending upon which uh, regulatory company, uh, regulatory agency is available, it may be broken down into more types. But mild concussions, there's no loss of consciousness, okay? A mild concussion, again, a uh, child will normally have a headache and they may have some dizziness and, and difficulty with tracking objects. May have, they have a change in their, their mood or change in their appetite, but it's usually mild. That's usually a child that uh, I would uh, minimize any activity for at least seven to 10 days. And, and usually what that may entail is maybe going back to school if they're able to tolerate light and sound uh, for short periods of time and then increase that period of time as they have more days where they're feeling better. And then once they're in class and they're able to function well in class, then start thinking about, okay, let's see if we can kind of get you back in, a, uh, in an athletic realm where you're not necessarily being involved in the physical activity of that sport, but maybe just running around, push up, set up things of that sort where we call it provocative testing where we get their blood pressure up a little bit and just see how they tolerate things. It's quite common that someone, child has a concussion and what ends up happening is they can get back into school work but when we do provocative testing, they can't necessarily tolerate that which means that they need to be out for a longer period of time. Okay, so keep that in mind. If someone has a severe concussion and, and uh, moderate to severe to me is loss of consciousness and greater severity of the headache and the nausea and the mood instability and uh, um, not being able to keep food down and things of that sort. That is an individual that usually needs to be out for much longer, and that may mean several weeks. As a matter of fact, I have a, a family member who uh, plays football in California who um, unfortunately had, it sounds like a pretty significant concussion. I wasn't there, but just talking to his mom and dad. And I, I told them the same thing that I would tell you is that I wouldn't want uh, him out back out on the field probably for at least four weeks. And what that would entail, same plan, is that first we have to get them back into their schoolwork. Uh, can they tolerate uh, a, a full day? Uh, uh, are they going to have headaches? Are they going to have dizziness? Are they going to have a hard time concentrating? There's a lot that goes on in a school setting that we take for granted. But you know, if you have a child that essentially has to wear sunglasses because it's too bright in the classroom for them to be able to really participate, then getting them back out on whatever field may, they, as their, their field of interest is too soon. So first, we have to get kids back into the school setting and being able to function at a high level, or function hopefully as close to normal as possible, before we can then think about the provocative testing that you would want to do to determine whether or not we can get them back out on the field. So uh, other things to keep in mind are uh, how many concussions are too many? Okay, and that, that's kind of a, a loaded question, it's a challenge because of the fact every concussion is different. And keep in mind, every brain is different. So if you have 
two kids that are roughly, let's say you have a set of twins that are uh, uh, both involved in an activity and they both get a concussion at the same time. There's no guarantee that they will ex have the same type of experience, that they're going to have the same symptomatology, that they're going to have the same recovery period. So I would advocate for all of you parents uh, that are out there that are listening to this, keep in mind that you know your child is, is unique and so how your child needs to be addressed in uh, the treatment of a concussion may be a little bit different than how someone else may be. Uh, I think the key is, is to make sure that you do things in a very stepwise fashion. I think the school work is most important to get your kids back into those activities uh, uh, sooner. And when they're able to tolerate those, then talking to the physical, uh, the, 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 either the, the, the trainer, that's, the athletic trainer that's involved with their team or with the, the pediatrician or the team doctor to, to determine when, when are the next steps to be done. So too many concussions, that's kind of a loaded question. You know, if a child has one severe concussion, that may be enough where the thought is, okay, let's kind of remove them from competition. If, they, if they, they, some kids can have multiple concussions in a relatively short period of time, I personally am very concerned about that because there is something called uh, sudden impact syndrome where a child has a concussion and then they get back into activity too quickly and have another concussion uh, and it can lead to actually uh, uh, an individual dying from that. And it's usually due to uh, massive swelling of the brain and it's, you, the brain has been prepped because of the first concussion. So that's why it's important to get kids off the field, make sure they get well hydrated, make sure that you know, they're able to tolerate some of the more basic rudimentary functions of going to class before we get them back into activity. One other question that we received is, um, what are the top two or three most common ways that people get concussion? Well, um, I guess you can probably break that into different age ranges. So if we're talking about uh, you know, our kids, kids that are in high school, uh, young adults in college, kids that are playing uh, 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 different types of sports, usually it's from the particular sport they're playing. So for football, football is the most common. Uh, you know, we, we all, uh, we watched last night, there was a Monday night football game that uh, probably you know, the majority of the population in the United States actually watched. So, uh, you know, head trauma, uh, and head trauma does not always mean that, you know, that, that someone lowers their head and they ram their head in something. Sometimes they, you can get pulled back from behind and you can hit the back of your head. Kind of the mechanism for a concussion is what we call coup counter coup. So coup is essentially a, a lunge forward. You can have a frontal injury from that, but also when you lunge forward, the natural reaction is to fall backwards where you can get a counter coup injury when you hit the back of your head. That can also happen in a motor vehicle accident. A lot of us are teaching our children how to drive cars, and heaven forbid uh, anything out of the ordinary happens, but sometimes it can happen where we can have almost like a whiplash injury. That can happen to an older patient, an older individual like myself, but you know, heaven forbid I get in a motor vehicle accident, but that can happen. So the kind of the, the mechanism of action is kind of this back and forth movement of the brain, where the brain, and a good way to think about the brain is think about it like a bowl of jello, okay? Uh, we all have our favorites. I'm a, I'm a cherry jello uh, fan. And if you take a bowl of jello in a glass bowl and you, and you just move that bowl back and forth, you'll see the jello moving, moving back and forth up against the glass. Well, the brain is kind of in that same uh, uh, predicament where it's surrounded by a skull, which is made out of bone, but the brain does have the ability to move back and forth in, in small, uh, uh, small increments but that can be enough to cause an injury. So for, for kids, it's usually due to sports. It's in, in, hey, listen, with X game out there now, you got kids that are skateboarding and they're, uh, they're, they're doing uh, motocross and using uh, bicycles and a variety of other types of things. Well, listen, kids fall, okay? You know, some, some kids don't have great balance. And so you know, uh, usually it's some type of physical activity, unfortunately, that will lead to a concussion. As we get older, it tends to be more falling off of a ladder, tends to be motor vehicle accident, things of that sort. Question is, um, uh, and I have my own little cheat sheet here, uh, what is the best time frame uh, for treatment for, for uh, someone who has a concussion? And I think, 
I look at that um, treatment also is getting someone off the field. So first and foremost is if, heaven forbid, you know, today's Friday, there's, there's high school football games going on, going on throughout the entire country. You know, if you have um, a child that is out there and they, it appears that they um, uh, take a pretty good size hit to the head, you know, we want to remove them from competition first and foremost. And then that's one way to just try to get, allow the brain a chance to kind of settle down. Uh, as far as the treatment goes, treatment is, is, is really, besides removing them from competition, is to just kind of give the brain a chance to recover. And, uh, and again, every brain is unique. And so to say that, you know, my 15-year-old who uh, plays sports, that his brain, if he has a concussion, if my 11-year-old is going to respond the same way as my 15-year-old is not really factual. So you have to treat each child individually. Uh, there's always a question about diet. What do I what do I do? What do I feed my kid? Well, uh, you know, uh, one hydration is very important. You want uh, the brain. The body is 70% water. So you know, hydrating with with uh, with water, with electrolyte repleting type of drinks. Try to cut down on your sugar. I think is always very important. You want to eat healthy. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, uh, green leafy vegetables are always good. Uh, protein is important. Uh, so lean meats, lean uh, uh, you know fish, chicken, things of that sort. Uh, you know, there's also a thought that to try to minimize grains and minimize eggs. Uh, you know, you don't see a lot of that in the medical world, but uh, those of you that uh, you know, have young folks in your family, or those of you that are interested in concussion, I mean, you should look at your diet and look at uh, are there some holistic agents that are out there. Now, listen, holistic agents. They're not FDA approved, uh, but you know there are uh, uh, things out there like ginkgo biloba, and, and there are uh, other types of uh, uh, essential oils that have been around a very long time. Um, some of them before any medications that that may be beneficial, but be well read. And, you know, and the other thing is, uh, don't spend five thousand dollars on vitamins. Okay? You know, I don't think we need to do that, but. Uh, be well read in both the traditional as well as non-traditional possible means of managing, you know, managing our loved ones. So, uh, uh, grains uh, tend to have a lot of preservatives, and so we, we want to be careful about that. Uh, they try to minimize preservatives. Eggs are, they, they have a, a, a lot of protein, but they, they also have a, a lot of things that our immune system can look at and say, hey, you know what, that's not necessarily uh, self, that's foreign. And so we want to try to minimize our immune system from attacking our nervous system. So being well hydrated, uh, eating lean fruits, and, uh, lean meats and fruits and vegetables, and trying to minimize preservatives, I think are, are, are all solid things to do to try to aid in the recovery of not only our kids, but aid in the recovery of those adults who also unfortunately have concussions. So uh, let me give you some take home messages, okay? Um, there's nothing in the world more important than our children and important than, than, more important than our family. So I think it's important for us to make sure that we protect our family and protect our loved ones when we can. If you have a loved one that is out on the field and they get injured, they need to come off the field, okay? And the idea of, okay, well, let's try to get them back on the field because they're the star running back. No, we want them to be a running back for the next two or three years. We don't want to necessarily put them in harm's way. Uh, I think uh, pre-season testing is great because that gives you an, uh, a way of determining whether or not your child uh, is, if they've had an injury. Um, it's important to minimize activity until they're able to get back into full activity, meaning that I think the academic workload is usually a very good early stressor. If they're able to tolerate that, then we can start looking at possibly getting them back onto the field. But to getting them on the field in a more graduated fashion. Be interactive with the coach and the, and, and the trainer. You know, this is my son. This is my daughter. Uh, your role for them is important, but my role for them is long-lasting. Uh, if you have a concussion, there's nothing wrong. Come to the emergency room. Let us evaluate you. Make sure that there has not been a permanent injury. Uh, there hasn't been something we need to be particularly concerned about. And uh, you know what? Be well read. Be well read uh, on, on concussions. Be well read on uh, making good dietary uh, uh, decisions on your loved one that can maybe be able to help them from an injury as well as help them to recover from an injury.